Okay, so we'll see uh, some theoretical concept like uh, in sequencers even where we cannot execute in my local machine. Uh, that is the reason we'll discuss some theory. But for example, routine activity. So routines in transformer even you might see these uh, routines. Uh, uh, I'll just call one job which is related to a transformer. Okay, so here you can see the routines concept. DS routines. Okay, so what is these routines? In the repository, even in the repository, even we can see the routines. So, so there are some built in routines and there are some uh, external routines, even. What is first of all a routine concept? I'll tell you. See, initially in the older versions of data stays, there is no flexibility of all options that today we see, like loop variables, stage variables, and if then else conditions, some a code or decode in SQL. So, like that, we have some limitations. Of course, decode and uh, we now we don't have, but we can call through Oracle Connector even by writing a query. That is a different case. But there are some other code or program that you want to call into the data stage, which is not related into the data stage. Maybe like C, Java, some other programming languages code. If you want to execute in data stage. That is what a routine concept. So if you want routine concept, you can use some functions of uh, like this. OK, we can call this convert quarter. If you have the value, you can convert it into quarter of uh, that year. How many quarters we can have. So like that, we have some functions. So if I want to write a routine, for example, a new routine I will take. Uh, Parallel routine I'll take. So you can call you write a routine name, and here you have arguments to pass an argument, and you can call that code even here. Uh, or sorry, call means you can write a code here by using these options. Okay, so using this, you can write create a new one that you can use it uh, like a user variable, user defined routines and all. You can make a folder and you can keep it in that, and you can call anywhere. If you want to run to the job level before, you can have in the job properties tab, see before job subroutine and after job subroutine. Here, not only the routines, you can execute some cell, cell scripts even. Some scripts even execute SH, you can give the path of the text script. So it will run before to the job. So before to the job, it will execute and it will show you, it will give the output. And this is after subroutine. After completion of the job, if you want to execute that script, uh, you can write it here. And in the routines also, you can call like here itself. Routine names also, you can call from here itself. So routines, they execute from the OS level. So you execute those if it is Windows. And if it is uh, uh, Unix, you can call execute SH. So like this, we can call them. So using before and uh, after subroutines even concept. So scripts also will execute in the same way. Okay, file archiving also we can do from here this concept only. Means we can write an archive script and execute as such we can give after the job. After completion of the job, the records loads here and after that the execute command, the archiving script will execute. So in that case, that file will go in the archive in the, uh, in the one particular archive folder. Okay, like that we can do archiving uh, here, here in, in one concept. So in the real time we do in that way. That is one case. And next, coming to the routine concept, this is what uh, in the sequencer level, if you want to call the routines, we use this routine activity. But now, nowadays, frankly speaking, from eight versions onwards, we don't have such a routines requirement. But in the previous versions of two eight, uh, if you want to migrate those seven versions and say six versions into eight plus version, then in that case, only routine concept will be useful. So in my total career, initial stage, I have seen routine, but uh, not more than that. So I don't have much more experience in routines concept. OK, but these are not required as of now, because yeah, now the options are very, very huge. Everything you can do it from here itself in the data stage GUI. OK, so that is the reason we are not discussing the routine activity concept. 
and uh, that is what uh, routine purpose if someone asks do you have any experience in routines simply say no because we are not at uh, uh, no way no nowadays with our projects which are developed uh, those are not required of routines concept okay so that is one thing and next thing we have a terminator activity why do we have a terminator activity so the terminator activity is to terminate a uh, uh, total sequence total sequence very required for example i'll tell you see i'll open the properties first of all i'll just give copy and i'll make it uh, activity name as the job name by using copy paste and next i have another activity i'll call another job that can be my copy operator job in this also the same way i'll copy it and make it into the paste okay okay so here i have a template activities and i'll put another template activity and i'm calling here another job the third job something to duplicate job i assume that okay so now if i put in this way so what happens whenever you have the job got aborted you should terminate throughout the sequence for example job triggers ds link 8 is to the next job and ds 7 is to the terminate activity to terminate activity i'll put as failed if it is failed it should go terminate activity if it is okay go further for the next job the same way here also i can mention ds link 10 is the other one ds link 9 is the terminate activity i'll put fail and uh, this is okay so now in this case ds link 11 i have and in this i'll put directly failed only so here in any case of the job fail about then the total sequence should abort for example in this job the job is getting aborted you should not run these two jobs of course trigger conditions also we can do correct triggers conditions also we can do. but here only total throughout the sequence should be failed so in that case we are making but this process is not that much uh, flexible because uh, for how many uh, job activities you are calling in a sequence or uh, canvas those many terminate activities we are calling correct or not so terminate activity is the one which will help us to terminate whole sequence and which case you want so like this if you pay, uh, make a job design that is not a flexible concept that is not the correct concept so here we have two options send a stop request to all running jobs abort without sending stop request it is like abnormal and normal so the job sequence job uh, termination should be normal or abnormal that is defined with these two options if you send a request for these two jobs it will send a request and after completion of the aborted of these jobs then the total sequence will job sequence will fail if it is not like that if it is not like that if you want to abnormally stop it do not send any request by default abnormally it will stop so there are two cases uh, maybe server issues may arise when you say abnormal and at dot job level even job may sometimes it may be crash so in that cases it will be a problem so we what we feel is we keep send a stop request to all the jobs sent in and the other way of uh, terminating the same total sequence is not in this way we design normally generally in the real cases what we do is what we do is we will take an exception handler and we will take one terminator activity and before to that notification activity and what exception handler does is exception and handler you don't see any arguments or anything you pass like a end loop activity what exceptional handler can do internally is it can observe or it can find any error or any warnings from the exception from the job activities that it find immediately to raise a request so that it will send first of all mails through the notification activity so notification activity if you want to work on we require a smtp server but in my local mission it will not be possible that is the reason i'm not able to show you again so here you can do the server name mail address to whom you want to send uh, and what is the subject and if you want to attach and if you want to include the status of the job in the email you can do that and 
once if this job get failed and it with the exception handler will take that request and directly first of all do the notification and next it goes to the termination activity by send so here what happened my job complexity is getting reduced or not so this is because of exception handler is an another activity which will work into that and this all together exception handler activity will be only one uh, one particular activity for one sequence at a time you don't see again enabled see here in the palette you are showing i am seeing okay so this is what uh, about the exceptional handler and notification activity to send emails to the managers uh, client and everywhere wherever you want you can make this notification activity if you want to send a file of rejected records you can do that here the file execute command activity is the one which need to handle the files from the os level of your edx so execute command activity will come and that we can put it into the notification activity that is the next uh, i mean uh the next level of uh, concepts uh, but not the basic level so that we no need to discuss now next uh, that request goes to the termination and it will terminate throughout the job this is what uh, about this exceptional handler activity and uh, notification activity and terminator activity which will useful to terminate the activity total sequence using terminator activity okay so this is what a three part and next we will go for uh, another one particular scenario of not nested condition with that we will see some scenarios and we will uh, um, uh, go to um, completion of the training mostly we are nearby and the most next two three four six, three sessions we will take i guess so we will see accordingly and uh, thanks for watching this time uh, video and thanks for your time thank you